Hello, this is a phenomena in which electrostatic interaction becomes very dominant. And in this, we have two charge plates. This should be imagined to be uh, actually plates here. So this is how it will look like. They're usually a centimeter or so wide. So it's a three dimensional view of the plates, let's say. <clears throat> and the electron beam is going through through this and a cross-sectional view of that will be here. So these are the plates. These are the two plates. And as the video described, there is a, uh, uh, these, these were very much used uh, in, uh, in televisions earlier. These days we have LCD screens, but uh, about a few decades ago, most of the televisions were uh, based with cathode tubes. So it involves an electron beam. An electron beam is a continuous spray of electrons going through pretty much uh, a line. And these electrons are really tiny particles which have a very low mass. Uh, electron mass is uh, to two six digits. It's 9.1 into 10 raised to minus 31 kg. <clears throat> and its charge Q is 1.60 into 10 raised to minus 19 kilo. Very small uh, numbers, but uh, electrostatics becomes dominant in two uh, broadly familiar scenarios. One is when we experience static electricity, and those should be thought of in the in the regime where we are dealing with styrofoam uh, pulse. These are these charges are in the in the scale of microcoulomb or nanocoulomb. The other is in atomic phenomena where electrons and protons are really contracting with each other. And the, there the charges are in 10 raised to minus 19 coulombs. These are the uh, scales in which we are working in. And uh, mass is also small. So effectively uh, uh, in that uh, small regime, these, uh, these are the most dominant uh, forces. So let's uh, to get an idea of uh, what uh, these forces are. Uh, we have a plate drawing the plates again, and this is a reference line. That's how the electrons would have liked to move but if it was not deflected, but they get deflected and this shows the deflection. So that's your deflection y. The distance el <coughs> uh, the electron moves while it is getting deflected is x, which is given to be 5.0 uh, centimeters. And initially, as it moves in, there is an initial velocity, which is in the x direction. And that's given to be 4.0 into 10 raised to 6 meters per second. That's a significantly high speed. Uh, if you want to remember the speed limit is uh, speed limit in the sense that nothing can move more faster than speed of light in vacuum. And that's about 3 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second. We typically move at uh, on the interstate, we are moving at 40 meters per second. So that's really low compared with the speeds at which trunks uh, move. Uh, when we say initial velocity is in the x direction, that also means that the initial velocity in the y direction is given to be uh, zero. With this, uh, with this uh, information, we should all, uh, one more thing, uh, we have an electric field that's uh, acting vertically because there is a deflection downward, but this is an electron, it's a negative charge. That means the electric field must be in the, in the upward uh, direction. 
the electron being negatively charged moves in the opposite direction of the electric field and a positive charge would move in the direction of the electric field. Coming to part A of the problem, we are interested in the acceleration. So the mass times acceleration here, mass being the mass of the electron has to be equal to the force acting on it. And here it is the electric force and the electric force will be given by Q times E, the charge times the electric uh, field. Can we even put in vectors uh, here, but the, all everything is happening uh, in either the X and Y direction and the motion itself, uh, actually it's a two dimensional problem. So let's keep the, uh, keep the vector signs and uh, understand that there is a motion in X and Y direction. So that's your X direction and that's your Y direction. <clears throat> And uh, we have uh, acceleration then is equal to Q over M times the electric field. Electric field is in the negative J direction. So we have 1.60 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulombs divided by 9.1 into 10 raised to minus 31 kg and we have 1.0 into 10 raised to 3 units for electric field is newtons per coulomb so it's newton per coulomb and if we put this all uh, together we have 10 raised to minus 19 and 10 raised to minus 12 that raised to 15 and 1.6 divided by 9.1 is 0 0.8 and that gives a number 1.8 into 10 raised to 14 meters per second square. It is Newton per kg, the Coulomb cancels out. So the Coulomb can cancel out Newton per kg, but that's meters per second squared. And that's because acceleration has the units of meters per second squared. We can expect that. Uh, I should also have put in a minus J uh, in here. So this is minus J hat, right? That's a direction of it, so it's minus J. What that means is acceleration has a direction downward, J hat is same as Y hat. So it's downward, so it's minus J hat times 1.8 into 10 raised to 14 meters per second square. Typically write the unit vector on the right side. That's a common notation, but it this helps to write this way so that units come on the right side and the direction comes on the left side. So the acceleration is pointing downwards, even though the electric field is acting upwards because it's a negative charge, it is experiencing an acceleration uh, downwards. <clears throat> Again, to get the scale of how tiny this phenomena is, how different it is from what we experience on it, on a daily basis, uh, it's good to see how much time it takes, for how much the electron takes to cross these plates. Again, these plates are typically in the, in the five centimeter to 10 centimeter uh, regime, at least in the ones inside a cathode ray tube. So we know the initial velocity in the X direction, it's not accelerating in the X direction. So we have our equation Q1 in the X direction to be Vi x is equal to delta x, which is just x itself, right? x over uh, delta t. Oh, let me, yeah, delta t, that's the time it takes to uh, cross the uh, cross plates. You can put in the numbers 4.0 into 10 raised to 6 meters per second, and x is x is given to be five centimeters so it's 
in the ten raised to minus two uh, meters uh, divided by delta t, and this implies that delta t is equal to that's five divided by four, so that's one point two five. Uh, but then we have only two sig digits, so it's one point three into 10 raised to minus eight uh, seconds. That's a really tiny amount of time. Uh, uh, even milliseconds are too small for us to observe. And this is in nanoseconds. This is about uh, 13 uh, nanoseconds, really small time. But those are the times uh, in which interactions become dominant in, in the atomic scales, uh, electrons and protons uh, uh, work in this uh, time regime. So that gives a feel for what we are doing. Uh, finally, let's come to the uh, deflection. That's what we are trying to control typically in a cathode ray tube. Uh, where does the electron actually go and hit the screen? And that's divided, uh, decided by the deflection uh, y. Uh, the y deflection is in the uh, y direction. So let's uh, list the quantities now we know in the y direction. This is kinematic equations. So delta t is something we have calculated. <clears throat> it is the time is common in the x and y direction. So it's 1.3 into 10 raised to minus 8 seconds, 30 nanoseconds, and the distance is going in the y direction is y, which is what we are looking for. The initial in the initial velocity in the y direction that's equal to zero. We're given the electron is <coughs> injected or uh, gets into the uh, <coughs> between these uh, plates horizontally, so it has no initial y direction. Uh, the initial, the final velocity, we don't know that, that is a missing variable. And the acceleration, we do know in the y direction is, uh, is minus 1.8 into 10 raised to 14 meters per second squared. Minus it, presuming that everything is positive in the upward direction. If we don't write the minus here, then y is expected to be coming out positive. In this case, now y is expected to come out uh, negative. <clears throat> so uh, the equation, since this is the missing variable, we use the equation that does not have the final velocity, and that's y is equal to the initial y times delta t plus half a delta t square. It's one of your kinematic equations. And this gives us zero because initial velocity is zero plus half minus 1.8 into 10 raised to 14. And delta t square is 1.3 into 10 raised to minus 8 seconds square. And that's uh, 14, and that's 10 raised to minus 16 minus 8 into 2. And that leads us to a 10 raised to minus 2, 1.8 into 1.3 uh, divided by 2 is 1.4. So this overall is 1.4 into 10 raised to minus 2 meters, which is equal to 1.4 uh, centimeters. So the deflection is, is about a centimeter, a centimeter being the size of a thumbnail. Uh, so that's a deflection. And this can really be controlled because electric field can be controlled by us to a very fine amount and that means the place on the screen where the beam is, the beam shows up which is about a millimeter by millimeter and uh, size can be uh, controlled in a normal uh, color television there are three beams and you control 
the, the beam scans the whole screen uh, many times in a second, uh, many, many million, uh, thousands and millions times in a second. That's how we gain resolution in the old cathode ray uh, tubes. This hopefully, this gives an idea of a electrostatic phenomenon and let me stop the recording now. Thank you.